Okay, so the, the hair on a head, the, the, some principles that you need to know is that they don't grow the same directions. They grow in all different directions. But now from in the frontal hairline here, you can see that for him, he actually has his hairs growing a little bit angled inward, okay? And they're a little bit radial going this way. In general, what I try to do with, with people that are completely bald is aim everything forward. The biggest mistake is to let them splay wide open because they fall away from the central core, making it very hard to, to comb. And also the central forelock lacks the density because they all book leaf, bookshelf open away. Um, so, and it's a natural tendency on a curved space. You're going to, in lab, realize how hard it is to make these all straight when you're designing it because your hand on a right-handed surgeon is naturally going to do weird things on a curved space. So you have to work and design on a curved space because you're going to start realizing you're going to create recipient sites that are not the same on the left and the right. So the first principle is they all go forward. But look at what he's got here. If he were just thinning, and he had a lot of hairs here, I would really look at his ghost hairs or what's left and mimic it. So I would go, in his situation, a little bit curved this way. The other thing here, remember temporal points are an advanced topic. I don't want you to be doing these transplants because these are so hard to look natural. But if you look at the angles here, they go this way, down, back a little bit, and then down. So this change here, you're going to hear a lecture tomorrow by Dr. Harris about this, but you can see that that is very, all, there are different angles everywhere. The other lesson you're going to see as I continue with the short lecture is that there are no abrupt angle changes. So the way that God designed the scalp is that there is nothing that goes from here to there. So if you are designing a, uh, uh, recipient sites where one goes here and all of a sudden the next one goes this one, it's not going to look right. So what am I saying? So take a look at this. This one goes here, this one goes here, this one goes here, this one goes here, and this one goes here, okay? The, um, and then on the lateral hump, which is this whole side area, you heard that lecture from Steve, is that they also transition very softly and not abruptly. So these go forward and then go down. These go forward and these go down. And as we start to go here, they almost just go straight down. Can you see that? They go straight down and then these transition over here. Now let's take a look at the crown. The crown has this natural whorl starting right here. Okay, and these whorls go up this way, goes down this way, but we know that, right? So, but what's more important than just teaching the whorl, because I think you've seen a, a lot of whorls, but also take a look at how they transition out of there. So here's the donor area, right? This whorl goes like this and then down. It doesn't go like this and then down. There's a gentle curve. Again, there's no abrupt changes. So here, to the lateral hump that we just talked about, let's follow this crown. The crown goes over to the side, and what does it do? It goes down here. So there's this natural soft transition. So as you design your recipient sites in the, in the, in the, um, in the lab, I, I really want you to pay attention to that. So let's look at to the mid scalp, okay? Remember his hair is curve a little this way. And so if you look, here's his world going like this, coming over here, and it starts to blend down into his lateral, um, lateral hump. But now if we go forward, they, looking here, I don't know if you can see it, they aim sort of forward. Okay, so this part, which is the center part here of the whorl that goes up, continues to go straight forward without a curve. So my point of the, the lessons is that every part of the scalp aims in different angles. You'll hear more about those angles in the next few lectures. But I wanted to introduce this uh, idea, and I want you to, to look at each other's scalps, whether it's balding or not balding, for, for several reasons. One, you're going to understand how hairs naturally look. And you're also going to understand the Norwood pattern. The one thing I've learned is that the Norwood pattern is something we gloss over. We just say, I know that. But I don't think you know that. It took me years, years, not months, to understand what really looks natural on a Norwood pattern. So it, if it's so front heavy here, you design this, you heard the central forelock should be really thick. You make this big central forelock here, and they've got this lateral hump drop down here, the crown is here. It doesn't look right. All right? Or you put this what I call front heavy design where it's way, your hairline's way over here because you heard that's a good design. You have no temporal point, it's back, or temporal angles are all the way, temporal hairline is all the way back here and they got a crown, it doesn't look right. So make sure that you really understand what the Norwood pattern is and we're gonna go through that in lab as well.